I'm Paul Marshall, welcome to Marshall Amplification here in England. Um, the company's history um, goes back to 1962 um, when Mr Marshall, my father, was, um, had a music shop in London. He used to play with uh, Pete Townsend's father of the Who. So Pete Townsend used to go into the shop and uh, have his guitars repaired um, after he'd broken them, um, buy his musical instruments from there. And um, when he was in there, he obviously asked about the amplifiers, he wasn't happy with the amplifier he was using. And so uh, Mr Marshall built an amplifier for Pete Townsend with Dudley Craven and Ken Bran at the back of the shop. Now we have that amplifier, the prototype they settled on, up in the museum uh, above me. The company went from strength to strength in the early days. In 1964 we had a unit in Middlesex, in Hayes in Middlesex, um, which was making 20 units a week. The company moved to this industrial estate in 1966 um, and at, at that time the distribution was being done by a chap called John Jones in Birmingham and the, Mr Marshall used to drive up and down the A5 which ran right in front of the building here um, sort of on a regular basis so brought a unit on this industrial estate. The company was still expanding very rapidly and by the uh, early 80s had moved a couple of times to factories on the same industrial estate but in the early 80s moved to a unit on this side of the building. This used to be two industrial, uh, industrial buildings. This unit here on the left we moved into first, and this, where we're standing right now was a service road servicing both the factories. And in the early 90s, Mr Mosh brought over the second factory and built into the reception that we have now, um, which is quite a good reception. It's uh, nice, we've got some of the older amplifiers up above us in a little bit of a museum up there. And as you can see around the reception, there are a lot of awards um, that have been issued to the company and to Mr. Marshall himself. Okay, this is the service department. Uh, this is the reception area where people can make an appointment, they can come in, they can bring their amplifiers, uh, either under warranty or older vintage amplifiers in here, and have them uh, refurbished, uh, serviced and revalved. Uh, bands touring in the UK uh, are welcome to make appointments drop in, drop their amps off, we'll service for them in the middle of that tour, um, they can wait, have a cup of coffee while it's done, then off they go and carry on with the tour. Um, and that offer is also open to any user of Marshall ampl amplifiers to make an appointment, come in here and have the, uh, the amplifier serviced. Now we've got quite a small service department, um, which we're quite proud of, because we give a three year warranty in the UK with all Marshall products. And all the products in the UK are looked after by the, the six guys in there. Um, for the three years. You know. So we have a very small number of warranty issues um, percentage-wise that come back and need servicing. Now on the wall here we've got the uh, pictures of various bands that have come in. Um, often it's the guitar techs that come in more than the bands. We have a roll of mild steel, uh, Zintec coated mild steel. It comes in a roll, it's the exact width we need. As it comes passes through the machine, You'll see that uh, the holes are all punched out um, by the machine. It cuts out all the slots. Uh, it'll do the threading if we wanted to do the threading. And there's very minimal waste. Obviously one of the concerns for a manufacturing company is the waste that you create. So here we keep waste down to the minimum. It's the exact length width we want. We then cut the board to the exact length we require for the chassis. Okay, the chassis is then going to be cut and comes off. That is your complete chassis, the flat pack. It's then passed over to the yellow arms. And the beauty of this machine is it builds the whole chassis in one go, in so much as it will cut it, it will, it will um, cut the holes out of it, and it will also bend it up. So it passes it from one arm to another. So the first arm, one side is bent up, it's then passed across to the other arm, where the other side is bent up. And then the end result is your complete chassis. And that's ready for the pegs to go into the circuit boards 
and then the circuit boards to go in. But this isn't for all our amplifiers, this is just for the um, sort of AVT range really, the mid-range amplifiers, the base range amplifiers. The valve amplifiers uh, are, have a slightly uh, thinner mild steel and have ends on. Because of the thickness of this mild steel, we don't have to weld ends onto these chassis. And that is a complete chassis for the AVT that was made on this machine. As you can see, it's, it's quite a thick mild steel. There's no end caps on it. And it's all put together in, in one, one roll of the machine. Okay, this is the Vipers press. This, um, we do most of the valve amplifier chassis on here. As you can see, it's a flat bed. Um, so you've got a flat bit of steel, mild steel goes in there. Slightly thinner than the mild steel used on the earlier Dimico machine. This has got 28 different heads in it. It will punch all the holes you want, it will thread the holes you want, uh, do anything you want as long as it's flat. Now, this machine though is much more versatile, so it can be used by R&D if they want to uh, play around with a design of a certain type, they can plan it in the computer and this machine will punch out whatever they want, whatever they draw basically. You do get more waste, as you can see it leaves a skeleton afterwards when the chassis have come out. Um, it takes a bit longer than the other machine to punch out all the holes um, and all that waste has to be recycled. Then when the chassis are punched out, they get brought over to this machine here where they get bent up. So they're bent up into a box section uh, prior to welding. So this is the chassis that's been made on the Viper machine uh, that you just saw. Uh, this chassis was uh, made as a flat, it was bent up afterwards. You can see the welding has been done on the corners and it's now got this gold effect because it's been anodized, which will stop it from rusting. The, Chassis you saw made on the other machine, which are behind me here, they, uh, as you can see, are not gold because they're, because they're Zintec coated, they don't need anodizing. The chassis then all congregate here and wait to go through to electronics where the uh, circuit boards are put in um, and uh, they get ready to go through to the amplifier the final stage. Um, at this stage, when the chassis are ready for electronics, the fronts and backs are put on the uh, on the valve amplifier chassis. As you can see here, this one here would be for a triple super lead TSL 100 head. Um, uh, stuck on the front of the chassis, all the markings on there ready. Um, the only other thing that has to be done after that is the serial numbers are put on at the, when the back end is put on the chassis. Okay, this is our hand wired section. In this section here we do all the hand wired amplifiers. As you can see it's point to point wiring, it's very neat, very expertly done. This particular amplifier I'm holding here is quite special because this is the 40th anniversary of the 100 watt, which as you can see, as original, is made with a dual output stage, dual output transformers. It's got the large KT66 valves in it and it's all made by hand, as it would have been done obviously in 65 when they were originally made. The reason why they used two 50 watt output transformers is because in 1965 they didn't believe you could run 100 watt output transformer. So they put the two 50 watts together because uh, again it was Pete Townsend of The Who who was uh, in those early days bands were playing larger and larger venues but you didn't have the PA systems that you now have. <clears throat> so they had to create their own sound and uh, send that sound across the vast audiences. So they wanted bigger amplifiers, larger speaker cabinets and, uh, and many more of them. And so in 1965, we built the 100 watt, trans, uh, the 100 watt um, amplifier with uh, initially an 8 by 12 stack, which uh, Pete Townsend thought would be a good idea. But his roadies obviously uh, didn't like casting that around and so soon complained. So he brought it back, and that is uh, um, when the, the first stack was born. Uh, and Mr. Marshall cut that in half, put two cabinets, and fixed them together. Uh, hence the uh, 100 watt stack was born in those days. So this is where the, the hand wired amplifiers are built. As you see, see there, the engineer is putting all the bits together. He will soon put the, the boards in and do the point-to-point -point wiring as well inside it. Uh, he's putting that bit there together for the valves at the moment. This is an area that we've recently expanded because the demand for amplifiers as they used to be made, so to speak, is uh, more and more. Uh, and for amplifiers, for example, the 1974X that we now make, um, I think it was a back order of about a three month wait for the amplifier in the UK. Wow. In this section here, the AVT chassis, which you saw being made on the Dimico press, um, all come together with the electronics. The circuit boards are brought up to this point. The fronts and backs are put on the chassis here. 
the circuit boards are put in on the bench, the, all the, uh, the controls are put onto the chassis, and then the chassis is tested at the end of the line on the computer, which puts a guitar signal through the chassis, making sure everything's working as it should be. Now we test all our amplifiers four times before they leave the building. Nowadays, circuit boards are put together mainly by machine. As you can see, these machines here are AI machines, automatic insertion machines. And what they do, behind them you've got rolls of components. The, the computer takes off the components it needs, and each component is tested by the machine before being put into the circuit board. It then puts a, bends the legs, puts a component in the circuit board, and then cuts the legs and bends them over. So all those components are loose in there, but they won't fall out because the legs are cut, and that's ready for soldering. The machine will, will put in three components every second, um, which obviously can't be, can't, you can't compete with as a human being. You couldn't put that many components in and test them at the same time. But it does require the large components to be put in. So the, the circuit boards then go down to the lines here, where the girls put in the large components before the circuit board goes through the solder bath. Okay, the circuit board when it's got all its components in, it's fed through the solder bath, which creates a wave of solder and solders the whole of the circuit board in one go. And then that circuit board will be tested at the end of that line before it goes over to the chassis. The complete circuit board. This is for an AVT275. The smaller components were put in by the automatic insertion machine. Your larger components were put in by the ladies on the, on the line. And then the whole board is sent through the solder bath which creates a wave of solder and solders the back of the board all in one go. Okay, this is a finishing department. Now we got our own wood mill just the other side there. We make the wooden boxes um, for the amplifiers. This is the, uh, the wood mill. Um, we're making 8,000 boxes every month in here for the production. You will notice that people walking around, they've got to wear ear defenders because it's quite noisy but they, they don't have to wear masks. We've got an extraction system in here that is absolutely fantastic. All the tools that are being used have got their own extraction hose on them, um, uh, which takes away all the, all the dust, all the sawdust out um, to, be, to be taken away and disposed of. Now in here you'll find um, routers cutting out the, uh, the boxes. I mean, the machine in front of you now is uh, a large router. It cuts out chassis in one go. Uh, all controlled by a computer and one person. But as you go around, there's uh, more intricate jobs which are uh, made on uh, small, smaller routers by individuals. When you're making the amount of boxes that we need to make uh, every day, the, you notice the joints all put together, all square. First thing you have to do is glue them. And to enable us to glue them uh, and work on them straight away, we use what's called a radio frequency oven, basically like a microwave oven. So the, for instance, a 4x12, the corners would be, the joints would be put together, clamped in place in here, then the front door is shut and that microwaves the corners in. And so a few seconds later, it comes out, the corners are stuck, the glue's dry, and you can work on it straight away. And at the end of the process for the, for the wooden box, everything is finished off by hand. As I say, even these hand sanders, the extraction system will take the dust away so it's comfortable for the people to work in. And everything's finished off to make sure the wood is perfect. During the production, people sign the inside of their boxes. This is something which started back in the 70s when Mr. Marshall used to work in the finishing himself. And he used to make, at that point, uh, made everybody working on an amplifier put their initials or their name inside so he knew who had worked on it. Because if he had anything come back, he wanted to know who had made it wrong so he could put them in the right direction uh, and have it done right next time. Now, interestingly, a little while ago, we had a, a chap come in with an early 70s 4x12 and a speaker had blown. Nothing had ever gone wrong with it before then. And we had it into the service, we took it out took the speaker out to replace it and, uh, and pointed out to him that it had Mr. Marshall's signature inside it. 
and he was chuffed to bits when we told him that it means that that amplifier, that speaker cap, had been made by Mr. Marshall himself. Yeah, because of the adhesive we use nowadays, um, it's all water-based, the boxes have to be heated up to 40 degrees. So we run them through the heaters here, heat them up to 40 degrees. The inside of the front of the boxes are sprayed black, so there's no um, reflection when they're on stage from the white wood, and then they're covered up. And that, by heating them up with these heaters, they're still hot when they go on the bench for covering. Okay, this is a covering department. You notice, if you were here, you would notice that you can't smell the adhesive anymore. Now, when I was a young lad, I used to come to the factory with my dad. The overwhelming aspect of this area was the smell of the adhesive, and you'd go out sort of high by the end of the day. Nowadays, it's all water-based. So what we have to do, when we make the wooden boxes, we have to heat them up to 40 degrees C. So when they come to this stage, the boxes are still warm, and the adhesive will then become tacky and be able, be able to uh, stick the cover into the box. Now you see, we, we are doing a, a white one here. This is actually just for a display unit, uh, the 1959 display unit. Um, but, you know, we've talked before, we said we, we make 8,000 units a month in the factory. That means 8,000 boxes have got to be made and 8,000 boxes have got to be covered. And these chaps here have got to work hard. You can't automate this process. All the amplifiers are different. You, you, you've got to be so careful in doing the covering. The corners have got to be perfect, um, especially on your hand-wired amplifier boxes where there's no plastic corners to go on. So this is a very skilled area. And it's a hive of activity, it's busy all the time, right from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock at night. It's non-stop in here. This is where the whole thing comes together. The circuit boards are put into the chassis and they come through as complete chassis on these trolleys. The guys here, they put the, the speakers into the combos or the speaker cabs, they put the, the chassis into the tops. They put all the handles and the corners on. They basically put everything together for the final time. And finally, the amplifier is, uh, the speakers are put in the cabinets, the Marshall logo is put on the front of the baffle, and the whole cabinet or the speaker, the speaker cab or the amplifier is sent off through for final testing uh, before getting packaged up and sent off to the customer. Okay, well this is a, an anechoic chamber. Um, when you produce any electrical equipment, it gives off uh, radio frequencies. And what we have to do in here is make sure that the radio frequencies does not interfere with a certain bandwidth, um, which emergency services and such is. Um, so in here, this room is called an anechoic chamber. It's designed to, um, to allow us to use fire the radio frequencies and then not to bounce off the walls, which actually makes the room 96.4 percent soundproofed as well. That's sort of a byproduct of the uh, of the design. Um, the equipment you're testing is put on a table. It's approximately three meters away uh, from the uh, the area which we're using. Uh, and all the new products have to be tested uh, in this in this manner. And by having our own anechoic chamber enables us to control when we're going to test it uh, and make sure it passes before we send it away to an external agency which actually have to pass it for the British standard. And we also, um, in the approvals department, um, we make sure that the equipment uh, is, cannot be, have their channels changed if someone's using a mobile phone next to you. So that, you know, if you're on stage, the last thing you need is someone's mobile phone going off and your amplifier changing channel. So we make sure there's no interference in that respect as well. When the amplifier's uh, packaged up in the box, we then shrink wrap the box to keep everything nice and neat. Um, it's got to be handled. We don't want the box getting torn, uh, accidentally opened. So it's just for added safety while it's in transport. What we do, it gets covered in the plastic. Then just behind the curtains, you can see in front of you, the, there's heaters which heat the plastic up, which makes it shrink around the cardboard box. As you can see in the warehouse, there's quite a lot of stock already boxed up. Uh, this is because uh, most of our uh, goods are made for the export market, um, with America taking about 40% of what we make, uh, only 10% staying in the UK. And we're producing 8,000 units each month um, in the factory here and most of that has been ordered uh, three months in advance by the export countries. So what we do here, we produce it, it's, it gets packaged up, shrink wrapped then gets put in line for its country, its designated country. And as soon as the container comes in, you can see uh, back in the far corner the uh, container being loaded over there, which is why it's quite full at the moment because there'll be a few containers come in and you see a lot of this would be shipped out uh, to, the, to the designated country.
Up here above the lobby, we've got a small museum. It's got some of our older amplifiers in it and some more interesting pieces. We've got some others which we keep um, stored uh, away because of lack of room in, in here. Um, some of the more interesting amplifiers in here is right here we've got what is referred to as the number one amp. Uh, back in 1962, Pete Townsend plugged into that amplifier. That was the prototype that they set it on. Pete Townsend plugged in and said, yep, that's the sound we want. And so the first amplifiers were built to that specification at the back of the shop. Uh, that was sold in 1962. Uh, a gentleman went to the shop, a local gentleman wanted to buy an amplifier for his son. He was gigging on the following Saturday. And Mr. Marshall said, well, yeah, I'll sell you an amplifier, but it takes me a week to make one amplifier. I said, there's no chance I can have one for Saturday. I got back orders. So the chap said, well, what about the one you got in the window? So he was sold the amplifier, it was put in a makeshift box. And off he went. And he brought it back two weeks later and said, excellent, fantastic. Um, but can I have one of those production ones now? So it swapped over for production. And then when the company moved to Milton Keynes, that was sort of forgotten about, stored away under the stairs. Uh, and it wasn't found until they moved to the first factory on this site. And they found that and said, oh, yes, that's that, that number one amp. Um, since then, there have been uh, a couple of offers for it from uh, some, uh, some of the well-known guitarists, uh, which have all obviously been turned down because it means more to the company as a historical piece. You've also got a couple of pictures in here. Of, uh, you've got a very early shot of Mr. Marshall on the drums. And you've got some of the old park amplifiers in here. And you've got a couple of interesting pieces like the kitchen marshal and the nav amplifiers. Okay, we've got a couple of the signature amplifiers that we've done um, in here. You've got one down there, the Zach Wildhead, uh, that we produced uh, 600 of, I believe. And there's the slash head further along. Two very different blues breakers in that picture as well. You've got the very early blues breaker at the front, and then behind it, you've got the Jaguar 40th anniversary all leather blues breaker. Yeah, the uh, very unusual guitar in the center there, with the built in amplifier and speaker which works, um, it was made for the Spinal Tap movie for the second movie, I believe. Over here, you've got two of the offset heads. The the rear offset head with an offset 4x12 cab is from 1962. That's how they originally made it was with an offset face, um, which meant that the amplifier, the head was balanced with the transformer, but people didn't want the face offset, they wanted it centralised, which meant that the transformer had to go down one end uh, and the amplifier is now weighted one end. But the one in front, the offset face in front, is one of the reissue ones that was done um, for America and Japan markets. Okay, well, thank you very much for having a look around the factory. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for showing the interest in Marshall amplifiers. Uh, we're very proud of what we make. Uh, we're proud of the quality of Marshall amplifiers and speaker cabinets. If you need to know any more information, you've got a website you can have a look at, which is www.marshallamps.com. And uh, from, through there, you can email the company with any questions you have.